My natural essence is baloney and sadness. It's good to know. <laughs> I mean, it's I so guess it could be me worse. To be getting a third vlog. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm recording. Hey, friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a therapy vlog. I am on my way to Logan Sport right now. I have with me and yeah I have therapy today I actually had med clinic yesterday and I was really nervous about it um, because I missed my last med clinic appointment and then um, can you turn that down like oh it's irritating it's raining and we're on a part of the road that's really loud and then the radio I can't stand static and it felt like it wasn't coming clear so Anyway, all right, so I went to med clinic yesterday and because I skipped my last appointment, I thought she was gonna be really upset with me, especially since the last appointment I had with her, she had not threatened, but said that she was going to put me in the ACU uh, just because she was so worried about my anxiety and depression and blah, blah, blah. However, um, my weight stayed the same, so I didn't lose and I didn't gain. Um, my blood pressure and everything, the numbers had improved slightly. I think I was like 104 over something. And then um, she did take me off the Seroquel. I had already quit taking it because I couldn't figure out why I was gaining weight. And like, I don't know, I was just like feeling really weird about stuff. And so I looked it up online, which don't ever Google your meds, you guys. I looked it up online and saw that, um, I think it was like 25% of all people who use Seroquel 100 milligrams were gaining like upwards of 10 pounds. I was on 300 milligrams and it was really messing me up. Oh, that's my book in the back. I was like, what is that in the back seat? So yeah, so I had already quit taking that. She did, however, tell me to increase my melatonin. I go up to 20 milligrams, which I didn't think you could go that high because I know it messes with your pituitary gland. Um, but she said I can go up to 20 milligrams. I just have to increase three milligrams at a time um, every three days. And so as of last night, I'm now taking 12, 12, 12 milligrams of melatonin at night. And I think it worked. It's, I had some really weird dreams, like some really strange dreams involving my mother-in-law and Anthony and just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Anyway, <laughs> uh, so we're on our way to actual therapy right now. Again, I'm really nervous about it because I also have missed my last couple of therapy appointments. And I mean, Kestrel's not gonna yell at me. She's not gonna be mad at me. I am still on the Prozac and Xanax. She didn't take either of those months away yesterday. So those are gonna keep uh, my mood up as well. Uh, the only bummer thing about today is Anthony went to get us Diet Vanilla Cokes. There they sit. And <laughs> They actually gave us regular Coke, and I, we both took a sip and we're like, ooh, ooh, we don't drink that. Um, and I called, and it was Max Express, and they were like five bucks. We're not gonna pay five dollars for vanilla Coke again. That's ridiculous. We can go get like Diet Coke, and then get like that vanilla syrup, yeah, and just make our own at home. Much more cost effective. Anyway, so we are actually, are we in Logan Square? Yeah, we're in Logan Square. Oh, we're in Logan Square. We're gonna be on time. My appointment, well, maybe. It's like eight minutes away, so we'll see if we're gonna be on time. But yeah, you guys, um, that's what I've got so far, and I'll check back in after therapy and tell you how that goes. So, I went to therapy, and I saw Kestrel, and she said that I'm doing really, really well. We talked about a lot of different things, toxic relationships, uh, warning signs as far as like relapse, um, all kinds of stuff, and we talked a lot about like food and my insecurities with like my body and my weight gain and things like that, and the effects of medicine, and what I can do to kind of like try to counteract those feelings and emotions. Going and talking to her made me feel very validated in the fact that like, I think there's a stigma placed on people who have eating disorders and have been through treatment, um, especially if you've been through treatment to where you've been hospitalized, uh, put in like an ACU, something like that. Um, I think people think that, okay, well, if you have an eating disorder and you were sick enough to be hospitalized and placed into a treatment center, then, you know, like, I remember going to the car center, they were almost like, well, you're never going to be able to really exercise again, and you're just supposed to eat, like, X amount of calories, whatever weight that your body sits at is what your natural weight is, and I mean, which I think is, I think it's BS, like, 
And it's frustrating because I like exercising, but to tell me that I can't ever exercise again because any relationship with exercising or any time that I choose not to eat a food over another food, um, like to tell me that that's like just innately uh, dangerous or relapse behaviors, like I just feel like that's really wrong to do and say. I guess I'm just in the next stage of my recovery where I no longer really have to worry about necessarily doing the eating, getting the weight on. Now it's more like finding a body that I am okay with and that is healthy. And so she doesn't, she's not opposed to me exercising. The concern becomes, you know, how much am I gonna be exercising? And so she put the limit, 30 minutes in the 24 hour period, which is gonna be really challenging for me. Um, because I'm somebody who I like to work out in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. When I work out, I like to do it all day. And so that's gonna be something that I'm going to have to work on. And, and that's where there becomes like this slippery slope that gets a little bit concerning and dangerous because that's when I can get into like relapse territory and stuff. She did validate the fact that I feel like I'm never going to be cured. I'm never going to not have an eating disorder, especially an eating disorder mentality. And she was talking about how like to categorize my thoughts and behaviors and put them in like healthy behaviors versus non-healthy behaviors and figure out like how to negotiate my thoughts and um, pick and choose certain behaviors over other behaviors and just kind of like be aware that I have an anorexia mindset, I have a mental illness, but then like don't give power to that. That's kind of the point that she thinks that I'm at in my recovery. It's now, okay, how do I add in exercise? How do I add in healthy eating without going overboard? How do I live with balance? Exercising is a good thing. There's so many good chemicals, endorphins, and just all kinds of stuff that your body releases when you exercise. There's just so many benefits to it, and I think it's it's very narrow-minded to think that I shouldn't ever have to exercise again. And every time I exercise, I'm engaging in a in a negative behavior. Um, that's not fair to hold me in a box. And it really felt good to really have her stand behind me and just kind of say, "Yeah, you're you're in that stage. You're able to do this now." The uh, the difficult part, the challenging part, is going to be doing it within balance. And that goes on to lead me to where we talked about me seeing a nutritionist and or a dietitian and getting like an updated meal plan because I've never had the ability to just kind of eat intuitively. It's always been um, what I don't eat to lose weight or what I do eat to gain weight. I've never had a healthy relationship with food and, and with eating. Um, and so she thinks it's a really good idea for me to talk to a dietitian and uh, just kind of get like a normal like base meal plan where I can you know get some education on how to use exchanges and how to you know not necessarily have like a calorie plan but like understand more like um, portion sizes and like just portion control and things like that like I know some servings like she was saying that like the, the front part of your fist, like that's considered a serving of pasta. And then like the palm of your hand is supposed to be like a serving of meat. And so like, it'd be nice to know, like how many, you know, servings of protein do I need in a day? How many servings of um, carbs? How many servings? And then like be able to do exchanges and stuff like that. And then do like meal planning and like do some recipes and cooking and things like that. I think that that combines with healthy exercise on a, I don't want to say limited basis, but like a controlled basis mixed with uh, maintaining a healthy weight that I'm comfortable at. I really feel like that is going to be the key to me moving into the next step, step of recovery where things just become like more natural and less forced and less, um, like I don't have to think about it quite as much. I mean, obviously I'm going to have to think about it Every day is a challenge with having an eating disorder. Like it doesn't go away, especially when you've had it for over 20 years. And so I think it's kind of naive to think that I'm not, that I'm gonna get to a position where I'm not focusing on my weight or my eating or, you know, calories in, calories out. So I think, like she said, there's a lot of power in acceptance. And so I'm accepting the fact that, yeah, like I'm always gonna have a disordered relationship and viewpoint with food and exercise and body image. So that's fine. Now let's move on and let's see what we can do about that. At the end of our session, 
she looked me right in the eyes and she said, I'm really proud of you, you're doing really well. Like, that just means so much to me because I've been working really hard. Like, I trust her and it just, I don't know, it's just very rewarding. Excuse me, and um, I'm glad that she can acknowledge that because there's a lot that's going on in my life that's positive. We didn't really have anything negative and then when we did come across something that was more on the negative side, her objective was more to challenge those negativities uh, rather than like put me down or be like, well, this is wrong and that's wrong. It was more like, well, what can we do to change it? And that's what I, I really appreciated because that's what I go through in my own head. Like, this is negative, how do I fix it? And I just like how proactive she was today. It was a really good therapy appointment. I really enjoyed it. That is what is going on. That is my therapy vlog for today. Um, it's been a long time since I've done this. If anybody has any questions for sure, uh, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. Um, I don't have a problem sharing my story or whatever. Uh, yeah, I really don't. I, I actually enjoy sharing it and I get a lot of feedback from you guys. I get a lot of support from you guys and I would love to be able to give that back. Well, that's all I have for you today. Please make sure to subscribe. Um, turn on your notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post. And then uh, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Have a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!